today I wanted to do a bit of a comparison of three different uh, SJ Indies that I have. Um, these, in my opinion, are the main three sort of different setups, CPUs and graphics cards you can have. Uh, the one, nice thing about the Indie is they're fairly configurable and there's quite a wide range of graphics and CPU options. Um, this one here is the one I was demoing the other day. Um, it's the R4600 uh, CPU, 8 bit graphics. Uh, basically, the R4600 CPU is a fairly balanced CPU, floating point and integer, you know, fairly um, you know, balanced. The next one across is an R4400, which um, the I believe the floating point performance is not as good, but the integer performance is better. So they are actually sort of different. This one is a 200 megahertz model with a mega cache, so it really is a very quick indie. Uh, and this one has the, I think it's the ZX graphics. Um, is that? This is the one that has a uh, some, some graphics offloading. So as you can see, it's quite, this is a dual height graphics board. It's a bit hard to see the whole thing, whereas this other one is a, a single height board. Um, so on the back, it's uh, up top there, whereas on the other one it is down at the bottom. Um, so this one I think I've got maxed out with 256 meg RAM. This is my best sort of best one. And then this one here is an R5000 model. The R5000 is a you know, much better newer CPU, uh, and they have the R5000 logo on the front. Um, this particular one is unfortunately uh, pretty much the worst R5000 you can get. It, um, let's put this case down. Uh, it doesn't have any cache this one as you can see. Um, so I think it's a 180 megahertz um, R5000 PC. Um, I haven't actually done a comp performance comparison on this first, say, uh, the R4400, um, although I suspect this one's going to be more balanced with the cache. I think the 4400 has uh, one meg cache, and I think the R4600 only has half meg. So this 200 megahertz one is really a very quick machine, even though the model number may not uh, show that. This R5000 uh, has the 32-bit, uh, sorry, the 24-bit graphics. So that, the difference there is it's got some extra memory chips versus this one over here. Um, the, you can put this board into the R5000, but the actual chip on this has some graphics performance upgrades and it kind of defeats the point. Um, so a lot of people would run a 24-bit board with a 5000 and then the ZX board for the, the older two machines. Um, that's pretty much all I wanted to show, just show you a couple of the different CPUs. Um, you can actually get 4600 uh, CPUs with the smaller heatsink, so I don't know if they did a um, revision with their cooler or not, I'm not sure. Um, it's interesting, this one I might not be able to see, but if you go down the side, I mm, don't think I can show you easily. It actually says 175 megahertz, uh, but it's not. I've checked it. I can't see any overclocking done to it. So uh, it's definitely a 200 megahertz one. And I have another one that is also says the same and it is also 200 megahertz. So the model number is doesn't seem to directly relate to the um, megahertz. Uh, so yeah, that was just a little quick overview of the three different main sort of revisions or setups uh, in terms of which one I'd actually use they're all pretty good um, I would be inclined to avoid this one because of the lack of cache but I don't know if it would matter too much I think for me though the best one is this R4600 200 megahertz 256 meg RAM the better graphics board really is pretty pretty much of a beast of an indie uh, that's all thanks